Hello and welcome back to theCUBE in person at an event, AWS reInvent 2021. We're here live with two sets, also virtual. We can watch theCUBE on the site, virtual sets, a hybrid event. I'm John Furrier, your host of theCUBE. We're here for three days, wall-to-wall -wall coverage, kicking off day one, all about software, ISVs, and also value of the cloud. We've got two great guests here, John Grosshands, Senior Vice President, Chief Revenue Officer of Prisma Cloud at Palo Alto Networks. Welcome to theCUBE. Thank you for having me, excited to be here. Savita Joseph, General Manager, Technology Partners from AWS. Thanks for coming on again, good to see you. Thank you, John. Uh, so obviously the story here at reInvent is Adam Celeste, new CEO, taking over for Andy Jassy. Uh, tomorrow's the big keynote, we're expecting to hear that the cloud is kind of going next gen. The next gen cloud is here. It's about applications, modern applications, and true infrastructure as code, security as code, data as code. Essentially, applications are now the number one priority. This is a big thing. This is part of the movement to the cloud. So, I got to get you guys' perspectives. Where are we in that movement? What are customers doing as they migrate to the cloud? It's not just lift and shift. They're like, okay, I got to re-architect my business. Big things are happening. What do you guys see? Well, I think there's a couple big drivers at the highest level, right? Some customers are thinking about migrating their IT estate to the cloud. They want to take cost out. They want to drive agility. They want to drive a better user experience. And you have other customers that want to innovate, right? They want to drive innovation and leverage the cloud for innovation and increase their speed of execution. And as they look at that opportunity, they're having to rethink DevOps, and which is making them also think more about DevSecOps and how are they going to accelerate that cloud application lifecycle so they can take advantage of microservices. And in addition to that, as we look back on the last two years, as we were talking about before we came on the air in this unfortunate pandemic era that we'll maybe refer to it as, many customers have been thinking about their supply chains. You know, what am I going to do with my supply chain? How do I really take problems out of that supply chain so I can continue to serve my customers and my markets? And it's also made them think about different ways to approach their customers. How do they reach their customers? And then how do they fulfill, build, and continue to nurture those customer relationships? So, I think those are the big drivers. And the, and the security aspect is so huge. You guys at Palo Alto Networks know this. Just give us a perspective and reaction to that. As people digitize their business, you get, security's going to be built in from day one. This is the number Absolutely. one thing we talk about on theCUBE. Baking it in from day one, whether you say shifting sure. left, whatever. Sure. It's your business, you're now digital. Yeah. Yeah, one of the things that we think we bring to CIOs and CISOs and to boards is really three different ways to get started with cloud native security with Prisma Cloud. You can start at the simplest of terms with posture management. I just want to inventory my assets and know what I have out there and make sure those are secure. I want to be compliant, I want to deliver on compliance and governance for my, my board and my leadership team. Others are thinking about workload protection, Kubernetes, serverless, containers. What am I going to do with those critical workloads that I'm now moving to the cloud? And then, to your point, the big push area is shifting security left. I've got to build security in right from the start of that application development life cycle, change the way I think about CI, CD, and delivering those applications securely in the cloud, and doing it fast. Now, time to market on applications is critical for customers, and they've got to think about building security in so they don't have to rework those apps and build security in later. Sabina, let's talk about what you guys have been doing with the customers during the pandemic and how they're going to come out of it with a growth strategy. We had some great talks on our, our CUBE program around how the software development life cycle's changing, how modern applications are being built, and obviously Amazon, you guys enable people to make money on top of Amazon, of course you make money too, but how are you guys helping customers? What's the big thing that's come out of the pandemic? Yeah, so while well, the pandemic has been unfortunate for all of humanity, but through this, we have really seen customers accelerating their journey into AWS. And security is top of mind for them. As customers continue to digitize their software, they're really looking for solutions from Palo Alto Networks on AWS. And what they're looking for is something very simple and cost effective, which Palo Alto has provided because of our long-term partnership. And as John mentioned, right, due to the pandemic and many other factors around it, there have been many constraints placed on the supply chain. But the economies of scale with AWS has really helped partners and customers address many of these constraints. So we have seen a tremendous yep. movement into AWS the last 20 months. Awesome, and how, how has the partnership for Palo Alto Networks been for you guys? Because I wrote in my article, I just posted last night around the preview of this event, and my interview with Adam Slesky is that cloud is enabling the partners, Amazon's cloud is enabling partners to do more than be a point solution. Yeah. And that we're talking about a platform, not tools. I mean, there's tools, tools are great, but this notion of super clouds are developing where partners are leveraging more than just hosting. Right. What's great your... partnerships always start 
end-to-end -end with customers. And so one of the things we're most excited about from a Prisma Cloud perspective is we now have over 800 common customers that are utilizing Prisma Cloud to secure workloads and to secure their security posture management and shift security left using Prisma Cloud on and AWS. And the other couple of big ingredients that we've had together is really multi-dimensional partnership that makes that all possible, right? We're an advanced technology partner, we have a number of programs that we run together, and we've also been a part of a handful of product launches and innovation launches that we're super excited about, uh, like what we've done with Guard Duty, like what we've also done with auto-provisioning using Control Tower. So, multi-dimensional partnership, which is always the best, we think, starts with customers, and then from there, what we've done is really taken a really intentional programmatic approach as we think about innovation programs and go to market together. Yeah, just to follow up on you know, mind, the, you're, you guys have been very successful at Palo Alto Networks. As your customer base is more, more sophisticated and smarter around cloud, you got to add more value and be responsive. What is the big trend in your customer base you see with cloud? Are they obviously keeping stuff on, on premises for certain things, obviously security reasons, but also data's got to be open up. So now you have a more of a bigger yep. data aperture. Absolutely, absolutely. And, and what's happening is, what should happen, which is customers are asking us to do more and innovate faster, and so you know, we're really excited about our recent launch of Prisma Cloud 3.0, where we've really expanded the platform. Uh, we're now bringing an adoption advisor, which is going to simplify the experience for our mutual customers so that they can more readily adopt CSPM, CWPP, and extend their utilization of the platform. At the same time, we've made a number of announcements about adding more value into our infrastructure as code approach, you know, shifting security left. So we're very excited about that, and, and so I think that you know, what we're finding is that we're needing to listen to customers and quickly build and deliver uh, innovation in the cloud as they're all trying, as to your point, new use cases and stretching their needs for cloud security. I got to say, one of my observations of the past two and a half years, even coming into the pandemic, was security clearly being baked in from the beginning, but the pandemic really exposed those who were ready for it. Yeah, and, yeah. That, and that's a big point, and now it's like DevSecOps, no one argues about it anymore. It's, right. It is what it right. is. Right. That's a huge difference from just five years ago. Absolutely true, absolutely true. And now, you know, as you're seeing, you know, partnering with AWS, customers are delivering actually their end product in the cloud, right? And that is the most critical relationship is their customer's customer, and they've got to make sure that it absolutely is a secure user experience because now we're talking about customer's identity, payment information, we're talking about critical customer relationship management now all in the cloud, and it has to be secured end to end. So, very exciting opportunity. Sabina, you're under a lot of pressure now. You have a lot of these big partners doing big business. They have big customers. I know they do. Palo Alto has a lot of great customers. How do you support them? What are you guys doing to continue to nurture and support your customers? Yeah, customers is the key word there, John. So we provide value to Palo Alto and other partners through a number of different ways, but one approach that we take is called a well-architected review. It's a process which looks at the software solutions through pillars of security, reliability, performance, cost optimization, and operational excellence. And the reason for that is we want to make sure that the foundation for customers is laid in the best way possible, because once you have that foundation laid, you can really, really build and scale your business. And so that is yeah. one of the ways we continue to provide value. And Palo Alto, we've taken the well-architected review through all of their solutions, both the ones existing and the ones in the future. It's exciting, I got to say, I've noticed you guys have been using the word primitives a lot, now it's foundational services. Because um, what we're talking about here is foundation, and a lot of the trends we're seeing from your customers both is, they want to refactor their business value in the cloud. The modern application trend isn't just about apps, it's about business model innovation in the software itself, so it's asking the infrastructure to be code, asking you to be programmable security, uh, with automation, all that AI. This is a trend, do you guys agree with that? Yeah, I, absolutely I do, and I think what you're seeing now from customers' point of view is they need to build security into that application lifecycle mental model. They have to have an end-to-end -end vision of how they're going to deliver those, those applications at speed and do it you know, utilizing cloud-native architecture so that they can have microservices that deliver value and they're more flexible. And that's part of the power, I think, of AWS and Palo Alto Networks Prisma Cloud is we're enabling customers to innovate at speed, shift left with security, build security into those apps, take rework out, deliver applications faster, which obviously drives more value to them. You know, I'd love to get your thoughts on something, John, if you don't mind while you're here. We were talking about for reInvent around major inflection points. Sure. And every major inflection point in the history of the tech industry yeah 
whenever there was a change of how people develop applications, speed and performance was super important, yeah. critical. How do you guys see that? Because you guys are on the front lines with security. Yeah. Performance matters now, whether it's in the cloud yeah. or in transit. What's your Absolutely. take? Absolutely. Absolutely. You know, it was really interesting in customer conversations, even some of the customer conversations I've had today. Every customer now starts a conversation with some element of cloud security, security posture management, workload protection, identity, data, but they all are coming back now to shifting left with security. It's part of every <laughs> single yes. conversation. I, yes, I was primarily interested in posture management. Oh, by the way, absolutely got to dive into how I'm going to shift left and build security in. And yeah. so that speed of development now, I think is going to be a key competitive differentiator for customers. They're going to have to become experts at delivering on that entire application pipeline. What's your reaction to that speeds and feeds? Well, it is, I believe it's really important and um, we're trying to do everything that we can help partners like Palo Alto Network with our processes yeah. and uh, most importantly, scaling the business, which I'm sure we'll talk about shortly, how we work together to really get those 800 customers. Yeah, talk, right. about, talk about that, because you have the, the Advanced Technology mm -hmm. Partnership Program. Talk about yeah, what you guys yeah. do there. Yeah, so first of all, I want to thank John and the entire Palo Alto team for building thank such you. an excellent partnership across Build, CoSell, and CoMarket. Yeah. And as an advanced technology partner, Palo Alto is part of four different competencies, security, containers, DevOps, yep. networking. And the reason why these competencies are so crucial is because you're able to list your validated solutions with public customer references by use case in each of these competencies. Right which I think, John, you would agree, enables then us to do focused demand generation activities through dev days, blog posts, webinars, account mapping, which of course generates those opportunities together. And Palo Alto is also part of our ISV Accelerate program, so our sales team is in fact incented in order to work with Palo Alto and help them close opportunities. <laughs> And then also, you are on AWS Marketplace, which enables you to do free trials, and enabling you to really scale across the globe. And then we are also helping Palo Alto across the globe with resources, including public yeah. sector, to help them scale their business. The, the whole um, selling thing is interesting. You're actually, Chief Revenue Officer, it's like, oh yeah, I love that. Um, this is a big deal. Talk about that further. I know the Marketplace is where people buy, are buying, yeah. but it's a joint sales, Amazon salespeople sell for you, right? Yeah, we, we call it, it co-sell. Okay. We call it co-sell whereby we can share opportunities with each other, and when we do share those opportunities, the sales teams are engaging together to understand, hey, what's going on at the customer? What are the pain points? What are the use cases, value proposition? And then going in together to the customer to win the deal, and then continuing that relationship beyond to continue to grow net new revenue. Not too shabby, is it? Oh, it's <laughs> fantastic, <Yeah>. fantastic. <laughs> Get more feet on the street, so to speak, and virtually. There you go, Absolutely. it works on both dimensions, and, and uh, to all the points you made, I mean, we have some terrific mechanisms we use together, you know, like immersion days, dev days, where we're able to work with customers, deliver well-architected, visions for our customers together, and when we're both designed in, it's obviously a great, it's a great win for the customer, yeah. it enables us to scale. I think it's a cutting, and not everyone gets these services too, you have to be a certain level to get the joint selling, is that right? That is correct, as an advanced technology partner and also as part of ISV Accelerate, which is our very focused co-sell program. Awesome. Well, thanks so much for coming on theCUBE, really appreciate it, congratulations on the great partnership, uh, two great Thank brands, you. congratulations. Final minute, just, What's your expectation as we come out of this uh, pandemic? What do you see customers doing? What's the one thing that all customers are preparing for coming out of the pandemic? What do you guys see? We'll start with you. John. Well, I think now customers are preparing for acceleration in all of their routes to market, right? Now they're having to anticipate the return to some of the normal routes to market that they, for some time now, have been trying to reinvent around and trying to drive primarily digital go to market. Now I think we're going to see growth on every dimension with our customers, because they're going to need to return to some kind of normal with their supply chains, delivering through brick and mortar and their yep. traditional delivery models on top of driving hyper growth that they're already enjoying with, through their digital go to market routes. So That's great insight. Savina, your, your thoughts on companies coming out of the pandemic looking for a growth strategy, what's the pattern? Well, I think they're going to prepare in order to address this pandemic in the future, right? <laughs> <laughs> if it, you know, or, some, get... or some <laughs> calamity of some way, right? Yeah. But I do think that what I'm observing personally, especially segments that have been yeah. slower to adopt because they wanted evidence, 
the pandemic has really increased that, whether that's yeah. vaccine research or treatment research, it has really accelerated that. So I agree with John, we're going to see it all across the yeah. board. I mean, one thing I, I'd, I'd say, just to support those two awesome insights is that the pandemic exposed what it works and what doesn't work. Correct. You can't hide the ball anymore. Yeah. You know, yeah. if it's software's being used, it's successful. If not, it's shelfware. Right. You can't hide the ball. Cloud, if it's not working, you know yeah. it right away. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. Thanks so much for coming on theCUBE, really appreciate it. Thank, Thank you, you for very having much. Me. Thank okay, you. CUBE coverage here at reInvent Live 2021. I'm John Furrier, your host of theCUBE. Stay with us, wall-to-wall -wall coverage for the next four days here on theCUBE.